Hello everyone, we are here again in our institutional orientation and we're going to talk about our sixth episode. Still, we are discussing the online environment and for today, we're going to talk about data privacy. And our learning outcome is for you to emphasize the importance of data privacy in everyday life, even in online environment. You can see our objective down here. We only have 11 slides, but I hope you will stick with me as we start our discussion. Ayan, so tatlo lang naman yung pag-uusapan natin for today. We have data privacy, we also have the RA10. 173 and also the regulatory and enforcement agency na mamya, mamya natin yan i-reveal. So, mag-start po tayo with defining what is data privacy. Well, kita naman kasi, di ba, sa salita, data, which talks about information, privacy, it means hindi siya dapat naka-out sa public. Therefore, Data privacy or information privacy is a branch of data security. Tatandaan natin yung term. Dapat secure yung data. And also, it is concerned with proper handling of data. Ibig sabihin bilang studyante, hindi namin dapat pinapamigay basta-basta kung sino-sino yung mga nasa listahan namin ng students. Kung ano ba yung profile nila. So, dapat very secure yan at very private po yan. Moreover, data privacy concerns itself as to how the data is being shared with third parties. Ibig sabihin, bawal pong basta na lang ipikay ang personal data with agencies, organizations, or even prospective employers. Moreover, data privacy talks about how data is legally collected and stored. Meron din tayong tinatawag na regulatory restrictions. Well, privacy of information is extremely important in this digital age where everything is interconnected and can be accessed easily. So, the possibilities of our private life, private information to be out in the public is very much vulnerable and very real. Kaya po, kailangan-kailangan talaga maintindihan ng bawat studyante ang tinatawag nating data privacy. Data privacy is the necessity to preserve and protect any, any Take note of the word, any personal information collected by any organization from being accessed by a third party. It is a part of information technology that helps an individual or an organization to determine what data within a system can be shared with others and which should be restricted. So simply put, Data privacy is the right of an individual not to have your private information disclosed to others. So, bawal talagang ipamigay yung private information ninyo. Meron kayong karapatan yan. Pwede nyo sabihin na, ay, ayoko po. Ayun, ayoko po malaman ng iba yung information ko. Ayoko po malaman ng iba yung cellphone number ko. Ayoko po malaman iba kung saan po ako galing, kung saan po ako nag-graduate. So, that is your right. You also have the right to live freely and away from surveillance and intrusion. So, dapat malaya ka talagang nabubuhay at hindi yung, hindi yung at risk yung ating data sa ibang mga tao. At napakahira po, lalo na yung ating mga cellphones and gadgets, minsan nasasubject sila for being 
revealed into the public. Kaya napaka-important po natin basahin yung mga terms and conditions ng bawat software or application na tinadownload natin at nilalagay natin sa gadgets din natin. Because there is a risk that your personal information is being sent out to the public. Moving forward, personal information or any information which can be linked to your identity, thus making you readily identifiable. Isang example dyan, yung email. So, yung email mo, syempre, andyan yung name mo, easily identifiable ka dyan. Another thing is your cell phone, cell phone number. So, that is the information that will really mention that this series of numbers is actually linked to you as a person. So, ano ba ang importance na ating data privacy? Well, meron tayong tatandaan dito. Meron tayong two factors that tells us why data privacy is one of the significant issues in the industry where data is one of the most important assets that a company has. Okay, so pag sinabi natin mga researches, napaka- Napaka-critical niyan pagdating sa data. Pag sinabi nating schools, syempre, dapat nitin natin lagi ng data when it comes to providing or proving that we provide quality education. Even with other companies, for them to show that they are improving, they would also provide the customer satisfaction regarding a particular employee. So, still, subjected pa rin tayo for data privacy. It is also the right of an individual to be free from uninvited surveillance. Tatandaan natin na right now, wherein everything is digital, everything is online, yung ating mga websites na pinupuntahan, yan ay mga giants when it comes to securing data. So even Facebook, Amazon, Google, um, Apple, so, yan po ay mga hari at reyna pagdating sa data economy. So, paano natin nasabing, nasabing hari sila? Pikin natin ang example ng Facebook, no? So, let's just try to create one search in your Facebook. For example, nag-search ka lang ng dresses. Um, let's say, wedding dress. The following days, makikita mo sa feed mo, may mga nagpo-promote ng dresses or makikita mo at mga advertisements regarding dresses which means your interests, your likes are easily accessible in a digital scale. Nakikita yan ng technology. Nagkakaroon tayo ng digital footprints and because of those digital footprints, tayo ay nagiging target ng mga iba't ibang kumpanya, ng iba't ibang mga advertisements. So, you have to be very careful with that. Pero madalas nagkakaroon ng confusion with what is data security or what is data privacy. Kapag data security kasi, that is a feature of a particular website or a particular application which will protect the data from being compromised. So, ito ay technical aspect. Technical to ni app, technical to ni, ni software, para nga naman hindi magkaroon ng breach dun sa data na pumapasok sa kanila. However, data privacy, it actually governs how the data is being collected, shared, and used. So, kailangan lagi i-ensure natin that everything that we check in our terms and conditions is na ensure natin na yung data natin is being private only for that company and not to be shared with others. Tingnan nyo lang tong example, no? This scenario, wherein you wanted to secure your personal identifiable information. For example, name, address, email address, account number, especially for banks, and also phone number. Gusto naman secure yan. Pero automatic, nagkakaroon siya ng ng trace sa ating mga cellphones. So, if you're going to type in your, in some Google Forms or surveys, magugulat ka na lang, automatic, nakasave na siya, di ba? Tatype mo pa lang yung first letter ng name mo, 
magkakaroon na ng kasunod, masispell out na yung complete name mo. Pero kahit papano, tinatry mo pa rin na isecure yung iyong personally identifiable information. Paano natin yan nagkagawa? Nagkakaroon tayo ng two-step authentication. So, minsan, kailangan mag-text mo na sa cellphone mo bago magkaroon ng verification. So, kahit tinatry natin na magkaroon ng mga iba't ibang security dun sa ating personal information, meron kang iba't ibang klase ng encryption, restriction, and also monitoring system. What if it was collected without consent and shared to other people without your consent? Ibig sabihin, that is a violation of your data privacy. Ito naman yung iba't ibang data na meron po tayo na kailangan talagang pakaingatan din po natin. So, we have first the online privacy. So, this would be the personal data that you give during online transactions, billing address mo, um, phone number mo, name mo, um, the maiden name of your mother, your email address is also part of it. So, financial privacy, syempre dapat secured ang ating mga finances and also yung mga loans din natin. So, ayan. Um, whether online or offline, dapat hindi yan share sa iba. That's why meron tayong naging trending na couple story wherein they save up their money for their wedding but ended up losing a lot kasi nag ang kanilang information to others and it was used by the hackers who were able to abuse it and they were able to get a big amount of money, a big chunk of money from the from the victims. And then of course, we have the medical privacy. Definitely, medical status natin or condition dapat ay hindi naman yan declared sa public, di ba? Residential records. Okay, so yung geographic address natin, Tutuusin, nakapin na tayo sa mga satellites, di ba? Yung locations natin, these are already pinned. Um, madaling makita na if you're going to search for my specific geographic address. So, still, dapat hindi yan madaling nakukuha ng iba. Although, gamit na gamit natin yan when it comes to shipping, di ba? Pero ano nakita natin? Yung when somebody wants to get back at us, merong mga padala ng... Pero mga food deliveries, tapos bigla na lang naka-charge sa'yo kasi ikaw nga naman yung nakatira doon. So, na-abuse pa rin talaga. Then of course, we have the political privacy. Definitely, yung political preferences natin, sisecure natin yan. Kasi mahirap na maging target at mahirap din naman na tayo ay ma-abuse din ng ibang tao. School records. So, your information about your grades, graduation, academic standing ay hindi po yan dapat basta-basta binibigay sa mga employers, even sa parents nyo. Hindi namin yan pwedeng basta ibigay sa parents nyo because we now value your data privacy of your school records. Puntahan naman natin yung RA number 10173. This was actually approved by President Benigno Aquino and yun yung tinatawag nating Data Privacy Act of 2012. August 15 siya na pirmahan. It was passed into law to protect the fundamental right of privacy of communication while ensuring free flow of information to promote innovation and growth. It also protects an individual's personal information from unauthorized processing. And then, meron tayong nagre-regulate for this or sila yung private body in charge of administering and implementing the Data Privacy Act. So, sila yung National Privacy Commission. They monitor and ensure compliance of our country with international standards. Ayun. So, ang NPC, sila ay mandated to have these different functions. Rule making. Ibig sabihin, maaari sila magkaroon ng ng mga different rules when it comes to DPA. Nagre-release sila ng mga advisory. Of course, they inform the public. They educate the public. They have a continuous compliance and monitoring ng iba't ibang mga companies if they adhere to data privacy. And also, they handle the complaints and investigation regarding violations. And they make sure that the DPA or the Data Privacy Act is being enforced 
for every Filipino. So ayun, medyo technical yung discussion natin ngayon. But to sum this up, what we just want to say is that, number one, data privacy, lahat tayo ay entitled to have our private lives. Diba? And then second is, meron tayong batas sa Pilipinas, and that is the Data Privacy Act of 2012. And lastly, we have a separate agency or organization that really manages all the complaints, investigations, compliance, and monitoring and ensures that the Data Privacy Act is being enforced in the whole country. So, ayun po, I hope you still learned something for today. If you learned something, you can still hit that subscribe button so that you are always updated with our lectures in our institutional orientation. So, yun lamang po. Once again, I am Abigail and have a great day ahead.